Hi, what's up, y'all? It's Pablo Cargan. It's Steve Boss Reacts. This video by the Generosity is titled Horror Movie Characters I Can Beat. I like this series. He usually puts this up every year. Um, people have asked, like, oh, why haven't you put up any Halloween related videos? Man, man, man. People don't watch them. They don't care. Okay. I did a whole series one year where I reacted to one scary video every day on my second channel. People didn't watch it. They didn't care. They watched maybe the first day or two and they tuned out. <laughs> so I have to cater to what people want overall. If people don't like something or they stop watching it, I'm not going to keep doing it. That doesn't make sense. So can't cater to just a minority of people. So that's why I didn't really do any Halloween videos like that. And even the Nick Crowley vid, I remember I, I did one of those. So the first one I did, people watched and, you know, it did well. But I did another Nick Crowley video. Nobody cared. <laughs> YouTube analyst was like, eh, people are barely watching this. Nobody care about this. It is what it is. Anyway, let's watch the video. The basket. Oh, Yo, it's spooky season. Halloween's right around the corner. So we back at it again with more horror movie characters that I know can't stand a foot against me because of my strength and intelligence. No one likes a long opening ceremony. So let's waste no time and get right into round one. From the movie Terrifier is about terrifier, terrifying, and murking random people. Born Mexican dad? I know his name is Art the Clown, but Terrifier is more fun to say. Now, when looking at him, he looks like your ordinary killer clown. And he is, but the difference between him and the rest is that he's brutal. He will deal with his victims in the messiest, most grotesque way possible. I don't even <laughs> think I can show you any of the ways of how he do it, because this YouTube. But he saws a woman in half from her poom poom to her head in front of her BFF. This dude crazy. However, I don't think he's all that terrifying based on my observations of him. In the first movie, when we get introduced to him, we as the audience can subtly tell that there's something different about this guy from everybody else. I don't know if you can notice, but this man's teeth is terrible. It looked like he never picked up a toothbrush a day in his life. You can tell he at least got gingivitis or mouth cancer. So that'll lower his stats in a fight against me. He technically fighting two battles at once. He also gets pitched by the pizza shop owner for being weird and creepy. Now, this would have been an amazing moment to jump on. Even though at this point in the movie, he hasn't killed anyone yet, him having a staring problem at the shop alongside his whole demeanor, I'ma assume he's trying to start something, and we fighting that. And since everyone else in the shop hate him too, they're joining in with him. Cause the way he do these murders, he strikes me as someone you can win against if you can sneak him or come in numbers when he don't got a gun. Now I know he technically a demon since he gets revived at the end of the first and second movie, but he got no other demon powers. Plus his revives <laughs> takes at least two to three business days to do. So I have time for seconds. I just gotta be on my toes. This is low to mid dip at best. Who made that mess? You did, Kate. Long Legs is about an FBI agent who gets assigned to a case of a string of murders and each one leaves a note signed by Long Legs. This guy. However, what's weird about these murders is other than the letters left at the scene, there's no physical evidence that this guy is the killer, even though he definitely is. I used to watch a lot of horror movies, but as of late, not really. Like in recent years, I haven't. Uh, so I don't know if these are newer or what. Look at him, he gotta be guilty of something. The reason for the lack of evidence is because there's two more accomplices to the murders. The main oh. character's mom, and Satan, the devil himself. They've been creating dolls of their victims, giving it to them, and having the devil do the rest. So this is a powerful force I'm dealing with. How am I supposed to beat these guys when they have the literal devil on their side? Well, joke's on them. Cause I deal with the devil every day. Through my struggles, temptation, anger. And almost half the time I end up winning because I have God on my side. What? And in a fight against these devil-worshipping demons, I believe he will give me the strength of a thousand young niggas to punish these sinners to death in a life or death boxing match. So yes, I can confidently oh say, on God, I'm beating the devil alongside his ugly-ass disciples too. No death. I have the Holy Ghost with me. A Quiet Place takes place in a world where monsters called Why Death Angels just popped up in New York and started killing people. Although these things are blind, you can't make any sound or noise because these things will find you. So you gotta stay quiet. 
This is gonna be more of a how to survive than me beating them. Cause okay. what I look like trying to fight this. I'm yeah, not I'm equal. Like, First, I'm gonna travel solo or with my direct family. I'm not traveling with no other groups, go. none of that. Especially if they got a kid with them. Second, no kid. All of them gotta go. Cause they'll be the first ones to get us killed. Most of them be crying over the smallest things. Plus they won't be able to run from these monsters with their little legs. They are free meal for these things. And I'm not trying to be the appetizer. And I'm only talking little, little kids. If your kid is old enough to know when to shut the hell up, they're cool. But if they aren't, I'm sorry to tell you, but I highly recommend you to abandon your children. They'll only hold you back just like in real life. Who knows? They might be able to survive on their own, maybe, probably. 5% you know, chance. But th that's not nothing. So only family, no kids, and a lifetime supply of moon pies. Gotta stay fed somehow. In fact, we probably don't even gotta do all that. Cause spoilers, their weakness is high pitch frequencies. So you can basically go to PetSmart and buy a dog whistle and have them beat. These guys aren't even much of a threat. They're like a little puppy that can rip you in half. When looking at them like that, they don't seem too scary no more, do they? Meaning they ain't gonna be a challenge for me. 10 out of 10, I'm surviving a quiet place. Wild scream. I need you to. Shake that booty, I'm blocking you, brother. Unfriended is a movie taking place in a Skype call. A group of friends are chatting, then the ghost of their friend that self-destructed exactly a year earlier joins the call and starts murking them one by one. Until one of them confesses about recording and posting an embarrassing video of her, which ended up being her 13th reason. And the ghost power level is pretty strong. It can physically break into their house and it's shown powers of mind control. So she ain't like some of those other ghosts that exist just to haunt you and be spooky. This ghost means business, but y'all know me. No person, ghost, or demon gonna catch me lacking. I know I can beat this ghost. The only reason these guys had a hard time with it is because these group of friends are dumber than a sack of potatoes. Although they do try calling the police once and attempt to track the ghost down as if it ain't a ghost, they don't do nothing else to fight against this ghost. They just play along with its death games. And I'm just wondering why none of these guys are leaving. Granted, the ghost said if anyone leaves the call, they die. But they can leave the house without the ghost knowing while staying in call at the same time. Everybody's screaming and distracting on there. Laura ain't gonna notice. By the way, that's the name of the ghost. And even if she were, we don't know that because they don't even try it. Or even better, secretly... I, I vaguely remember seeing this trailer and being like, this is so dumb, I ain't watching it. Some horror movies are just so stupid, look stupid. I'm like, I'm never gonna watch that. Text everyone in the chat to turn off their Wi-Fi at the same time. So they all leave the Skype call at once. Because with this, they technically did not leave the call. They got kicked out, so it doesn't count. And even if it do, it can't go after all of us. It's one ghost. Only one of y'all gotta die. Not me, though. Or we could do the best option, which is to confess your sins. Because spoilers, the main girl in the movie was the one that filmed Laura's 13th reason and posted it. And earlier in the film, when she was researching how to stop ghosts from killing you and your friends on FaceTime, the website said admitting guilt is the only way out. So all she had to do was say, yo, about the video and the bullying and me being the reason you shot yourself, my bad, like, I didn't even know you were gonna do all that for real. She could have just done that, but instead she blames her friends when the ghost asks who did it. Getting them killed with her still dying because the ghost knew she lied the whole time. Unbelievable. All this bloodshed was completely avoidable. I've listed a few good options to beat this ghost and save your friends' lives at the same time. But you know what this girl does at the end of the movie instead? She goes on chat roulette, begging people to call the police for her. Now, if this is not the dumbest option, I don't know what is. Tell me, would you go on a mango, talking to niggas from Timbuktu, begging them, please call the cops, a ghost is killing us on FaceTime? Like, why would that idea even cross your mind? These guys are so dumb in the movie. There's no saving them, but they're saving me. I am not dying in this situation, even if these were my group of friends, because I'm going to be in that call confessing and snitching like I just received a happy meal at interrogation. I'm all for ride or die, but dying is always the last option for me. And if I don't have to, I ain't going to. This is a low diff ghost problem. I'm surviving. Oh, yeah. 
Godzilla needs no introduction, because everyone will know them when their big ass shows up. Some might say they aren't a horror movie character, but I know the Japanese would hate to see this nigga coming, so I'm counting them. Not only do they stand at more than 350 feet, but some of its powers include nuclear breath, nuclear shockwaves, laser beams, telepath, regeneration, flight, and fight. This thing's stats are all maxed. I'm surprised anybody stood a chance at even damaging this beast. Many people would assume the task of beating Godzilla is an impossible mission. But you know what? They said the same thing to Tom Cruise about his missions. And that guy has like 30 movies proving us wrong. So do I have a plan against Godzilla? Of course I do. Listen and learn. Now, fighting, military weapons, and nukes won't work on it. But you know what would? and Ava. We build a motherfucking Ava suit to beat Godzilla. These things are not only strong, they crazy fast, or at least fast enough to dodge his lasers and hot ass breath. Plus, we've seen how crazy the Ava can be when it goes berserk. Against Godzilla, it might have a chance. Now you might ask, how the hell am I gonna get access to an Ava? And I'm telling you, if Godzilla pulled up to Myrtle Beach one day wreaking havoc, they won't have time to think about military strategy or how unqualified I am for this task. It won't matter, because they will see my confidence. And when me and whoever the president will be next week meet eyes, they will immediately be like, someone please get this man a suit and all of our tax money. Ava suit secured. Now all we need is someone's mom to sacrifice and merge her soul to the Ava. I vote Beyonce. I believe her soul is stronger than a thousand subs. Beyonce! With all those requirements put together, I believe I have a pretty strong chance against Godzilla. And if the government so happens to deny my request, then we'll all I'm not gonna hype myself up too much, so I would say I have like a six, maybe seven out of 10 chance of beating Godzilla, you know? But it has to be in the suit. With no Ava suit, Pray. And there you have it. A few more horror movie characters I could beat in a match of fisticuffs. I cannot with him. <laughs> uh, valid reasons, but no, I think you would die with each and every one of them. Uh, but yeah, I kind of want to see that Terrifier movie. His face is vaguely uh, familiar, but I don't think I've ever seen that. I don't know, but he is a clown. I feel like there are a lot of clowns. Maybe I saw him and I was just like, mm, not another clown. I'm not interested. I don't know. But may look into it. Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos I'm going to watch. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye.